name suggests, it eats all the stuff from the inside of the coconut. Now to do that, it's going to take its massive pictures, fry off the husk of the coconut, and these crabs are so smart, they put the coconut shell on top of their head, climb to the very top of the coconut tree, and then drop it, hoping it hits the ground hard enough to split it open. Now to catch the coconut crab, we have to look for their holes, because they like to dig big, big holes underneath the coconut tree. So we look for those holes, stuff like the brown fibers of the coconut husk, and we set it on fire. That's how we catch the coconut crab. Now everybody say amazing. Right. Now the coconut tree is one of the most versatile tools that we have in our For example, take all the roots out of the ground, you pound that down, squeeze the juices from those roots, make some medicine that we call the aula The bottom part of the coconut tree trunk is the hardest part. So we carve our weapons, farming tools, or even use it as the base of the pillars for our houses. Combine that with the leaves at the very top to make your own roof and catch yourself a nice shell too. Leaves at the very top of the coconut tree. You strip that down, bring it together, makes cup and mats you can sit upon, plate your bowls to eat off of. Papalis, hats or headbands that we go ahead and wear, or even brooms to sweep your own house this way. Today we're making some coconut milk. But if you take your coconut milk, you leave it in the sun for three days, and on that third day you boil that over a fire, and you make your very own coconut oil. So whether it's coconut oil, food, water, even your own house, the coconut tree, still remains one of the most versatile tools that we have.